The words ecology and economy come from ancient Greek roots, and ecology is the ecos household, uh, and so is economy a household. They both come from the word ecos, but economy is the ecos nomos, which means the law or rule of the household. And ecology is the ecos logos, and that's the organization of the household. And why would you separate the structure of the household, the organization of the household, from the way it is run, the rule of the household? I, as an evolution biologist, uh, have gotten myself involved with economics is because, as far as I know, economics is about the acquisition and transformation of resources into useful items, and then the distribution and the consumption and either the throwing away or the recycling of those things. Now, in nature, it's always a case of recycling because nature has a zero-waste economy. It's a closed-loop economy where the recycling is necessary to keep a finite planet evolving endlessly new species and ecosystems and things from the same materials, basically. So if we see that nature has billions of years of experience in this highly efficient and effective closed-loop economy, then we really have something to learn from that, since our economics have been linear economics where nature has been treated not as an ecosystem in which we're included, but as an environment, an impersonal it, uh, separate from us, that has been taken to be a pile of resources for human use. And then what we do is we take those resources, and in most cases they go through heat, beat, treat, uh, or our high-tech agriculture that's had a lot of heat, beat, treat methods behind it. And in that kind of production method, 96% of the resources are wasted to start with. And then, of the 4% that we turn into useful things, the, um, they're usually thrown into dumps afterwards. So we have 99 plus percent waste in our economy. And that's because we've never had a science of economics. We've never tried to learn economics from nature. Another thing that's very interesting to do is, suppose you look at your body's economics. And my favorite way of telling this is to say, imagine that the uh, northern industrial organs are above the diaphragm and that they have the, the ownership of the rest of the body so that the raw material blood cells that form in bones all over the body can be mined and shipped to these northern industrial organs. And then the uh, heart-lung system gets into play and the lungs clean up the blood and um, oxygen is added to the blood and then the heart distribution center announces what the body price for blood is. And you ship the blood only to those organs that can afford it. So you can see very quickly that this kind of an ownership and pricing system would not work very well in a healthy living system. In fact, some of those very bones that were mined, uh, if you think of them as the countries in which we do a lot of mining, might not be able to afford the finished product. So there's a lot to learn from nature about economics. In a really highly developed economy, I believe the role of money will be the role of that currency called adenosine triphosphate in your own body in your cells where the money is issued in order to make the transactions happen and is never repaid. It's issued over and over depending on how much you need, but it's a disappearing currency. It works to make a transaction ha happen and then it's not there anymore. So basically, the highest evolution of the economy would have that kind of a gifted currency, a gifted currency.